last week, as I was going through personally some of the challenges in my life, and I also spoke to a couple of you last week, and they ended up in listening to some of your struggles and what you are going through in your life. And also I listened to some of, some of the wonderful testimonies of God doing great things in our lives, in your life, especially when I listened to you. That really gave me a hope and assurance that God does miracles. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen? You know, I want you to believe this morning, God is still on the throne. God is a God of miracle. God is a God of wonder. And that gave me confidence that God is still on the throne. He is not done with us yet. Can you say that this morning? God is not done with me yet. You know, if God would have done, God would have done with you, you may not be here on the face of this earth. So there is a reason for your existence and my existence this morning is just simply because God is alive. Amen? He is a God who is alive. He is a God who is living and he is so well and he is so alive. So as I was going through all these things in my life and listening to you, I was asking this question myself, what could be the root of all blessings that we experience? What could be the root of all blessings in our lives? This morning I would like to title my sermon as Root of All Blessings. Can you say that with me? Out loud. Root of? Root of all blessings. Root of all blessings that simply means where these blessings are coming from. Where all of it began. So that we are experiencing those blessings in our lives. So this morning there are a couple of things that we are going to focus on. Number one, we are going to talk about blessings. Can you say blessings? blessings. Who doesn't like blessing? Anybody here? All of us. You know, we don't often talk about blessing. You know, we talk about many other things. But this morning we are going to talk about blessings. So one word and you, need, you should never forget during this sermon and I, even after you go back. Number one, what is that? Blessings. Can you say that again? So we are going to talk about root of all blessings. The question I had with me is that, can it be my hope on God that may be the root of blessing? Or can it be my faith in God, maybe that may be the root of all the blessings? Or maybe I thought, maybe it's all our righteousness, you know, we are able to, we are good people and we are able to good, do good things, amen? Bible says none of us are good. Only he is good. So probably that cannot be the reason. I was thinking about can it be that we are following all the commandments? Anybody here following all the commandments? We struggle. We all, we all struggle. So maybe it cannot be. Can it be our giving? Sometimes we say that you give more to God and God will bless you more. I mean it's true. It's true. God blesses us. You know. God blesses us. But that cannot be a blessing maybe. Can it be our business? Our business flourishes and God, how many of you do business here in this church? I mean, the real business. How many of you, you, are, you are having your own business? Can I see your hands? Can I see your hands? One, two, three, that's all? That's all, You're, you all need to start your business. It's time that you need to start your business. You know, God wants to bless you through what God has put in your mind, put in your thought. You are, you are capable of doing certain things. You are skillful in certain areas. Why are we keeping that within us? Open up. God will bless you. You'll see. Give it in the hands of God. Give first priority to God. And give bless God in everything that you do. You'll see glory. You'll, you'll see blessings. So can it be our business? But may not be all the time. Businesses go up and down. Sometimes we open business. Sometimes we close business. We all do this. We do all these things. Can, can it be our, st our company start going up? Can that be the root of all blessings? May not be. Can it be my health? It cannot be. Today I'm okay, tomorrow I may be down. Can it be our inheritance? Because my father and my forefathers, you know, made, kept a lot of property for my, me and my family. God bless you if that is true. Amen? If that is you, can I say an amen? Amen? God has, God has given you inheritance, properties, 
coming from generation to generation. But that cannot be a blessing to So what can be the root of all blessings? Can we all raise that question this morning? What can be the root of all blessings? Can you all say that, together? say that together? What can be the root of all blessings? The material blessings that we're talking about, that we need for our survival, for our living, for what we need around us, for all our comfort, the physical blessings that we need, our health, what we need, our, our em emotional condition, our mind condition, and all those things, our spiritual blessing, the relationship that you have, I have with our God, all these blessings put together, what could be the root of all blessings? And I was searching scriptures to find out the right scripture where it says what can be the root of all blessings and this is what i found i got the i got the answer for my question in james chapter 1 verse 17 can we read that together every go ahead and read out loud every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning NIV says, who does not change like shifting shadows? NLT says, he never changes or never casts a shifting shadow. God is so brilliant. God is so bright. But at times, you know, we think that, you know, we, we are not blessed. Maybe God has changed his mind or maybe we are under, under, the shadow is falling. But God is saying, he's not like a changing or shifting shadow. God is the God who always blesses. Amen. So today we leave, at times we leave the source of our blessing and we try to find blessings from different sources. Can you say different sources? So we need to really analyze our lives and we see where we are trying to find our, find our blessings in our finances, maybe in our health maybe in our you know in our in our job situation maybe in our career maybe in our status in this nation maybe in our marriage maybe in our children's in the life of our children maybe in our future for our future for the ministry for the church where is the source of all the blessings that we experience and we need and this morning we are finding an answer god is the root of all blessings can you say that with me god is the root of all blessings so we are going to talk about this morning three different truths that will help us to receive the blessings from God. How many truths? Three different truths that we are going to talk about. Number one, if you can get that on the screen. God knows what we need. Can you read with me? God knows what we need, but we must know he's the root of all blessings. God knows what we need. But it is important, he knows what we need, but it is also important, it is important that we must know he is the root of all blessings. You know, when I say he is the root, I really mean it. God is the root of all blessings. We will find that in a moment. Many times we forget that truth. Many times we forsake God and try to find blessings from different sources. You know, God at some point of time spoke through the people of God, through prophet Jeremiah, and this is what he said. He said, you people know who is the living God, where you can find true blessings, but you leave your God and you try to go to different places and find blessings. Can you come with me to Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13? Can you read with me? For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountain of the living water, the source of all blessings, and hewn themselves, they made themselves cisterns or water containers, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. What we do, what people of God has done, can you look at me this morning, can you look at me, all of you look at me, what people of God have done, they have done how many evils? Two evils, what are those evils? Number one, they have forsaken God. They have forsaken God. And we are talking about God is the root of all blessings. They have forsaken God. And then what they did, they hewn themselves cisterns like water containers, broken cisterns, broken water containers. And that cannot hold the water. What does it mean? Does it mean anything, broken containers? When you have a broken container, how much whatever water you pour into that container, will it stay? 
it will not stay it's going to go down how much ever you pour into that container where you try to collect blessing it's not going to go it's not going to stay there so people have taken to, done two evils one they have forsaken god and one they have hewn themselves broken cisterns that could not hold i always tell that as a testimony 22 years of working in industries my career never brought any blessing then it threw us into debt it was never a blessing at all probably i didn't know that you know without knowing we were hewning broken systems and trying to put all the blessings all the dollar that comes in but it goes through another way is that the case in your life god wants you to know he is the ultimate source he is the fountain of living water can you see a say fountain of living water she is the ultimate source or the root of all blessings broken cisterns that simply means we look blessings in wrong sources at times we look blessings in wrong ways at times we look for blessings that are not according to the will of god we don't wait to find out whether it is god's will or not we take decision and we jump into it and we don't receive the blessings are we go for blessing forgetting god and i remember always people come here and test say testimony saying that i can i i receive i got a job i'm not talking talking about you livingston i know that you know you are so faithful and i know for sure you will you will you will be faithful to god amen amen but i, I remember people come and testify here saying that god has blessed me with a job and that is the last sunday they ever showed up at the church broken systems that's not going to hold blessings again sunday is not the day to work for your sunday is not the day to work for your earthly employer if your employer is asking you to work all the sundays in the month and all the months in the year you better talk to him i usually tell you know we even some point some point of time we had a lot of nurses at the church even right now even have we have nurses thank god for them and they say that you know every sunday we are on duty and i say go and talk to your supervisor go and talk to your manager tell them that i want to go to church i want to seek my god on sunday morning they'll give permission and there are many times they have given permission at times you know we don't come we are unable to come to church because we don't ask so when we have shown broken systems for ourselves we forget god we tend to go away from god we tend to go away from the house of god we tend to go away from the work of god we tend to go away from the people of god we don't have fellowship with them anymore broken systems cannot hold the water but god is talking about we are talking about this morning god being the root of all blessings can you say that with me god being the root of all blessings god wants us to come to him for every need whatever the need may be you know this morning i'm serious i'm talking about you know coming to god for every need every blessing i'll give you a couple of illustrations from the word of god this morning abraham at some point of time he was getting old he was getting aged bible says god blessed abraham in everything in every aspect of his life god blessed him abraham called one of his oldest servant and he called the oldest servant and told the oldest servant i want you to go and find a wife for my son i'm getting aged i want my son to get married isaac to get married i want you to go to find a woman <coughs> find a wife for my son and just go and he said you cannot find a wife for my son in this nation among the not among the canaanites but you need to go to where you need to go to look at me look at me you need to go to your father's house and you need to go to your own country my own country where i came you need to go to my father's house and find a wife for my son from from my own family that was a task and a servant was asked to take an oath and servant has taken a oath now what is his task what is the task all of you what is the task what is the task kelim what is the task find a wife for whom find a wife for isaac so find a wife for my son go and find a wife and that was the task to so the servant 
He is in a difficult situation at that moment. For him, it is like searching needle in the haystack. In a big haystack, can you find a needle if it is lost? Some of you search that way, right? At your house, it looks, most of the time, the house looks like a haystack only. And you search for something there. And you're not going to find it. And that's how it is. Isaac had to find a wife and servant was sent. The servant responded for this challenging task to God. See how Abraham's life influenced his servant. And you know what? He turned to God, the root of all blessings. And he prayed to God, God, make me successful today. What was the prayer? Make me successful today. God, make me successful today. And scripture tells us, before he finished praying, who was standing in front of the servant? Who was standing? Who was standing? Out loud, you're right. Say that loud, Lord. <laughs> Rebecca was standing in front of the servant. Can you come with me to Genesis chapter 24? We are talking about God being the root of all blessings. All blessings. Genesis 24, 12 to 15. Whatever we, our need may be this morning, we need to find out from God. We need to talk to God. We need to ask God. We need to tell God. Can you read with me? Then he said, then the servant said, Oh Lord God of my master Abraham. See how he is referring to God. God of my master Abraham. And please give me success this day. And show kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, and here I stand by the well of water. And the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Verse 14. Now let it be that the young woman to whom I say, Please let down your pitcher. Uh, or bucket, you know, and that I may drink. And she says, drink. And I will also give to your camel to drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to myself. And in Jesus' name, amen. He prayed. And what happened? And it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebecca, who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother came out with the pitcher on her shoulder. So what happened? The servant prayed to God, God, make me successful today. And Bible says, if you read further, Rebecca gave him water, as well as Rebecca gave water to all the camels. And eventually, Rebecca became Isaac's wife. wife. Amen. So this morning what God is telling us is God knows what we need. But we must know that God is the root of all blessings. Can I hear an amen this morning? You know, we know, we, we know what we need and God knows what we need. But it doesn't mean that we should not ask God. You know, sometimes we get into a mode saying that anyway God knows, why should I tell God? Sometimes we don't pray even. And we don't even say, open our mouth and tell our needs to God. Anyway, God knows, but that's not true here. Abraham knows, God knows. And she knows that if Abraham is sending it, it's going to happen. But still the servant has a responsibility to pray to God. And this morning, what are you waiting for? What is it you are in need of? Anything that is good that can come only from God. No, I want you to experience, I want you to witness this in your life. Anything that is not from God, it's not going to be a blessing in your life. Time being, temporarily, it may appear to be a blessing. Bible also says only God can bring blessings to you. Only God can make you rich. And he will not add sorrow to it. Only God can make you rich. And he will not add sorrow to it. You know, it is important how we get our income in, how we seek out for our wealth. It's also all important. But if we seek God, if we seek our, for our wealth, if we seek from God, whatever, it may not be just wealth. Maybe a simple thing that we'll talk about in the coming time okay, in the, as we move further. I want you to remember he is the root of all blessings. Can you say he's the root of all blessings? And number two, God knows what we need. Can you go to the next slide? God knows what we need. Can you read with me? But we must never underestimate the power of asking. God knows what we need. But we should never underestimate the power of asking. So what does it mean? Power of asking means prayer. 
in prayer we ask he knows what we need but God Bible repeatedly says we must ask can you say ask Bible repeatedly says we must ask God knows our need asking opens the door for blessing asking opens the door for blessing it's not enough you keep it in your mind it's not enough you think that God knows it is important that you need to ask how many of us stop praying for ourselves how many of us stop praying for yourself thinking that God knows everything anyway start praying for yourself yeah don't stop start praying for yourself start praying for yourself you need prayer as others need prayer pray for yourself pray for yourself God I need I need health I need wealth I need strength I need good mind I need everything for me to function as me can you pray for yourself it's very important that we pray for when we are faced with challenges that seem to be overwhelming or overpowering overcoming our lives we shouldn't fail to ask God we shouldn't fail to take God's help when we begin the day we are not sure what this day is going to hold for me ask God for help early in the morning when you get up ask God for help God I don't know this day seems to be a challenging day for me I don't know how I'm going to overcome this day how I'm going to handle this day I need you I need you simple matter even if it is how silly it may be ask God asking opens the door for blessing for raising our children ask God for succeeding in your workplace ask God either it is big or small whatever our need may be God is telling us to ask him to ask him the more we ask for his help the more we receive the more you ask for God's help the more you receive John chapter 16 verse 24 this is what Jesus said can you read with me until until now go ahead and read go ahead and read until now we have asked nothing in my name ask and you will receive that your joy may be full we are talking about a God who is the root of all blessings and God is telling us this morning it's very important that we ask want you to understand in a very simple way when you buy a product who brought any who bought anything recently yes yes what did you buy sorry dehumidifier that's very important what did you buy what keychain you bought a keychain that's very important for you yes you need to keep that who else bought anything oh uh, yeah yes throttle throttle burner throttle body in your car okay good that you need certainly you need for your car yeah and what did you buy electric pipe electric bike <laughs> sorry electric bike you you need that yes electric bike and I really appreciate you the way you work so he, he has an electric bike and then you use that electric bike for your work for uber right so you need that certainly you need so whenever we buy so anybody else bought anything here you bought what avocado car tire okay car tire I'm sorry I have problem in me yes yes okay she's witnessing because <laughs> most of the time I don't hear what she says I hear very selectively <laughs> selective hearing that she knows well <laughs> so when you buy a product or when you buy a service why do you think there is something known as customer support because they know that you need help with the product I mean there is flaw in the product that's a different story but then even to install even to make it work you need help at times when there is a problem you need to contact customer support so if that is true I want you to think this way how much true it is it is that we need to contact our maker at times and we all know that we are living in a fallen world a world already is corrupted and how much more defect we find in us as we age how much more problems we find within ourselves how many flaws that we find 
things are not going well. There are things that is not allowing us to function the way we are supposed to function. Every time you need to call your maker, your customer support, and who is your maker, by the way? Your God. So it's very important, as we are talking about this morning, that God knows what we need, but we must never underestimate the power of asking. There is a woman, Bible says, it doesn't even tell, tell her name. Bible says, Canaanite woman. A Canaanite woman followed Lord Jesus Christ because she was in need of deliverance for her daughter because daughter was demon possessed and she was just crying behind Jesus as Jesus along with his disciples they were moving this woman crying 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 always crying and following Jesus and disciples got irritated God Jesus why don't you say something this woman is crying all the way why don't you just ask her to go say something and ask her to get away and Jesus said I came only to for my own sheep, the lost sheep of Israel. So I don't really care about her because she's a Canaanite woman. I don't really care about her. I just came only for the lost sheep of Israel. Then she again came to Jesus and worshipped Jesus. And she started asking Jesus, Jesus, can you please help me? Can you please help me? Can you get back into the word verse now? Matthew chapter 15 verses 28 to 26 to 28. Can you read with me? But Jesus answered and said, what did he say? It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said she did not give up. She has been following. Disciples asked her to get away. And Jesus said, I don't really care about you. And then Jesus said again, he said, it's not good to take the bread to throw to the dogs. And what happened? Verse 27. And she said again, she said, what did, he, what did she say? Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus really moved in his heart. Verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you deserve. And her daughter was healed from, from that very hour. What do we learn from this? Jesus offended her? Did he? No? He said, dogs, Jesus offended. I don't even care about you. Jesus offended her. Jesus discouraged her. Jesus, in fact, insulted her at that moment. Even then, she never stopped asking. Can you say asking? Even then, she never stopped asking. She never underestimated the power of asking. And this morning, I want you to know, I want you to know for sure, never underestimate the power of asking. Never underestimate the power of asking because she knew very well, Jesus is the root of all blessings. You know, this morning, I don't know what you need. I don't know what is your need. Whatever your need may be this morning, ask Jesus, ask Jesus, because the Bible is packed with proofs. Whenever they called upon the name of the Lord, whenever they asked Jesus and they received, this morning there is nothing hard for our Lord to do. Everything is possible when you ask him. There are testimonies after testimonies. We were speaking to Gina's mom the other day and she was going on and on, giving testimonies, testimony after testimony. And she's saying that the, the, the reason why she is alive today on the face of this is the miracle of God. God has strengthened her faith in such a way that she doesn't matter. She doesn't even dis hesitate to discontinue her treatment. Not just an ordinary treatment, even severe treatments. She doesn't even care to discontinue the treatment. She doesn't even care to discontinue the medication because she believes in God. We believe in the same God. We believe in the same God. Amen. Can I hear an amen this morning? Out loud. We believe in the same God. I want you to believe. No matter what we go through, when we ask, He is faithful to give you. Number three, God knows what we need. But we must never underestimate the power of what? Praise. God knows what we need. But we must never underestimate the power of praise. And I know many of us, or really never tried this powerful weapon called praise. Some of you would have tried maybe, not all of us, I guess. 
And this morning, God wants you to listen. Many churches don't teach about the power of praise. Many churches don't teach about the church I was born in and the church I was growing up. We go to church and we take a hymn book and then we sing from the hymn. And we stand up and we sit down. Again, we stand up. Again, we sit down. That's what I'm... I'm not discouraging. I'm not talking negative about those churches. Those churches are needed because they are reaching the souls. They are reaching the lost too. But that's not enough. And one point of time we realize it's not enough for us to be in that church anymore. We need to grow spiritually. We started looking out for Pentecostal churches. Where we can learn about praying where we can learn about praising. Because those churches, those days, maybe things would have changed now. They were not allowed, we were not allowed to praise. You remember those times, any of you coming from that background? And I know some of you are coming from that background, even if you don't touch your, your church, you don't praise. Lift up your hands and praise. Yes? I want to talk about the power of praise to you this morning. Those who are listening to me. I want to talk about the power of praise this morning. Many churches limit the praise only to the stage. And we don't do it. We don't limit the praise to the stage. I always tell the worship leaders who are leading, stop everything what you do here and ask people to praise, ask people to worship. How many times we say that lift up your hands, put your hands down. I mean, that's not the way to worship. When you come in the presence of God, let your hands go up. Anybody told you not to lift your hands? Anybody told you, any of you? Yes? Anybody told you not to lift your hands? Lift up your hands. What the Bible says? Men, lift up your holy hands in the presence of God. Lift up your hands and praise. Start praising the moment you walk in, your, in the presence of God. This morning I want to tell you, can you read the scripture? Can you read the title again? God knows what we need, but we must never underestimate the power of praise. We want you to know the power of praise. Paul and Silas, on that night in the prison, they did not say that, God, we did your will. God, we went to outreach ministry. And now where are we? In prison. When you go to outreach ministry, you can also be in where? In prison. So be ready. You need to prepare yourself well. You need to pray. And don't tell me that I will pray and prepare and then come for the ministry. That's not going to happen. But we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. We are out there. Out there. Among the people of this world. Two little children sharing the gospel. And you speaking to somebody. Praying with this somebody. I saw one picture of Parth is praying with the two ladies here. From two, three. Three ladies and those ladies are just like this. And he was praying for them. Paul and Silas were doing the same ministry. They're not scaring you. Nothing will happen. God is with you. Amen? Amen? Are you just a little afraid now? No. You may have head counts going down in the coming weeks, maybe for outreach ministry. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. How many of us are bold here for God? How many of us want to stand for God here? Can I hear an amen? amen. And we want to see you out for outreach ministry next Saturday. Amen? Yes, Brother Raj is there. Amen. Right? So count down him now. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Silas were thrown into the prison and they were not saying that God knows anyway, let's go for a sleep now. No, 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 they were not doing it. Instead, they started what? They started praising God. They started singing hymns. They started singing and praising God. By the way, learn how to sing. Learn how to play an instrument. It's all important. It will help you in prison. It will help you in prison. Today, you are in prison and you are unable to come out of your prison. I'm talking about the prison that you are living in today. Today you are in prison and you are unable to come out of the prison because you do not know how to sing. You do not know how to play an instrument and praise and lift praises to God. And that's the reason you are in prison all along in your life. And if you want to come out of your prison today, learn how to sing. And Paul and Paul and Silas, they started praising God. And there was a great miracle. Can you come with me to Acts chapter 16 verses 25 to 26? Can you read with me? But... At the midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. They started a service there, and they have an audience there. All the prisoners are sitting there and listening. Verse 26, suddenly there was a 
great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chain were loose. Amen? That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. We know where the root or where is the root of all blessings that we experience. And we don't underestimate the power of praise. Yesterday, when we all went for outreach ministry, I got some good time to be alone. I took the guitar in my hand. And you know what? That was a great time that I could ever have on the face of this earth. Such a great blessing, such a great presence of God, just such a great strength of God. That's how God wants you to overcome. Question to you, since how many days you have taken your instrument and started praising God? Since how many days as a family, since how many days and months and years, your family coming and sitting around the three of you, four of you, five of you, sitting to two of you, sitting together, sitting around. Listen to me, listen to me, I'm talking to you. Since how many days and months and years, as a family come together and clap and sing praises to God. You used to do that at some point of time, but then now, where is your praise? Where is your praise? The reason you go through all the things that you are going through in your life, you stop your praise. There is no more praise racing above your ceiling. There is no more praise racing in your mind, in your, in, through your mouth. Since how many days you played a worship song in the, in the cassette recorder player or some other audio player and prayed along with, sang along with, crying. Since how many days that had happened? Where are those times? Where are those times of praise? Where are those times of prayer? The reason what you're going through, the reason why you're going through what you're going through, because you stop praising God. You stop praising God. I want you to go back home. I want you to close, close your closet. I want you to kneel down and lift your hands and start praising God. You know, you will see the glory of God. Children of God, that's how we can overcome challenges. That's how we can overcome struggles in our lives. Never underestimate the power of praise. Always remember, God is the root of all blessings in the, in the story of King Jehoshaphat. People of God were under attack, severe attack, attack, because they had to face a giant army. Jehoshaphat was leading the scenario there. So instead of solely relying on the military strategy, Jehoshaphat led the people into a time of praise. Can you ever imagine? In the battlefront, they are facing a major army, a gigantic army, and Jehoshaphat, instead of strengthening his military strategies, he is asking people to lead in praise and worship. In praise and worship. The Bible says their faith and their, faith, their, their praise really triggered God, prompted God for a supernatural intervention that led them to get a miraculous victory on that day. This example is shown in the Bible. I believe that we need to know the power of praise. We will never underestimate the power of praise. Can you say that with me? I will. I will. Can you say that with me? I will never underestimate the power of praise. God knows our needs, but praising God but not underestimating the praise, the power in the praise that we raise can make God to do extraordinary miracles in your life. I want you to believe 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. Can you read with me? And when out loud, can you all read together? And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, what did they say? Praise the Lord for his mercy and news forever. Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambush. Man means a surprise attack on them. A surprise attack against the people of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir who had come against Judah and they were defeated. The simple reason was not their military strategy, not the power of their army. The simple strategy was praise. 
This morning, I want you to believe. I want you to know today all the troubles that are sticking on to us will fall down, will fall apart when you raise your prices. Amen. I want you to believe. I want you to, some of you are not doing that ever. Can you go back to home today and try doing it? Try doing it and I, I, I'm sure you'll come and tell a testimony next week. I'm sure, pretty sure. You will come and tell a testimony next week. Can you go home and start praising God for get everything? If you want to keep your TV out loud, volume, volume, let, let, pick, pick the volume, put the volume, TV in volume, high volume, and just start praising God, start praising God. First of all, when you praise, you know, there's a whole sermon as such, I'm not getting there. First of all, when you praise, first thing that will happen, your heaviness will go. You will feel light. <laughs> you know what? That itself is the beginning of the miracle. The heavy things will go from your life, from your mind, from your heart, and you feel light. You feel light. The heaviness of your heart will leave. And the burden that is pressing us to the ground will leave from your life when you start praying. Start doing it. Start doing it. Nobody is stopping you. Start doing it and you will see the glory of God filling you and God using you. Start using you. That's how you can get strengthened. That, that's how God can strengthen you. Shall you all arise this morning as we close? I'm going to summarize three things that we talked about this morning. God knows what we need, but we must know He is the root of all blessings. Secondly, we talked about God knows what we need, but we must never underestimate the power of asking. Thirdly, we talked about God knows what we need, and we must never underestimate the power of praise. Shall we close our eyes?